Welcome to day two of 3.7. We will be looking at absolute value inequalities today. So I really encourage you to put your best foot forward and focus as much as possible as this can be a little bit tricky. So we can write absolute value inequalities as compound inequalities. Let's take a look at the left side of your chart. This is at the bottom half of your note sheet. Absolute value of n minus 1 is less than 2. This means that all numbers with a distance from 1 that is less than 2 units is included. So let me repeat that. This represents all numbers within a, de a distance from 1 that is less than 2 units. So as you can see right here, here's 1. And all these values that are represented in this graph are less than 2 units away from 1. So that's what it means. Let's get rid of the symbols n minus 1 is less than 2, it's the exact same thing as before, and n minus 1 is greater than negative 2. And we can write this, whenever we use an and inequality, remember we can just combine it, we'll put the smaller number on the left, the n minus 1 in the middle, and the bigger number on the right, and that's what that means right there. Now let's look below. To solve, this is just a random example to show you how it works. To solve absolute value of x is less than 3. Solve the compound inequality, negative 3 is less than x, which is less than 3. So what this is saying is x is within 3 units from 0. So that means it would have to be between negative 3 and positive 3. So on the left side, this is an and inequality. So I want you to write that down somewhere. And remember from section 3.6, the and inequalities are always an overlap. So you can see in the graphs on the left column, they're both overlaps. They're not going opposite directions. And you know that you're dealing with an, abs an and inequality if you are starting with this symbol. Do you see that that less than symbol is common among all of those? So circle that. It's a less than symbol. When you see that, it's an and inequality. Now let's go to the right side. n minus 1 is greater than 2. That represents all numbers with a distance from 1 that is greater than 2 units away. So you can see that we have 1 right here. And all of the values that are in red, shaded, are greater than 2 units away from 1. So let's rewrite this expression without the absolute value symbols. n minus 1 is greater than 2. It's always the same thing as the original for the first part. And or n minus 1 is less than negative 2. Remember, remember when we're using or inequalities, we cannot combine them because they're going in opposite directions. So let's take a look at the bottom half. Uh, absolute value of x is greater than 4. This means that all values that are included are more than 4 units away from 0. So we, we will just make this negative 4 and positive 4. So here's 0, and all the values that are shaded are more than 4 units away from 0. So and inequalities have a less than symbol in the beginning, or inequalities have a greater than symbol in the beginning. So make sure you write that down. We need to distinguish the difference between the two. And at the very bottom, I say similar rules are true for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. It doesn't matter if the line's underneath. It doesn't change. Okay, let's try example four. We have absolute value of 8n is greater than or equal to 24. So first of all, this is going to be an or inequality. That means they're going to, in the graph, the lines are going to be going in opposite directions. They're not going to overlap. Now let's rewrite this. 8n is greater than or equal to 24, or 8n is less than or equal to negative 24. Remember, we just flip the symbol, and we make that number its opposite. So if we start with positive 24, we're going to make it negative 24. So just in case you're confused about this setup, let me um, just restate some things. The inequality 
says that 8n is at least 24 units from 0 on a number line. That's what that greater than or equal to symbol means, at least 24 units from 0 on a number line. And in order to be at least 24 units away from 0, 8n can be less than or equal to negative 24, which is this part right here, or 8n can be greater than or equal to positive 24. So now let's solve these things. We're going to divide by 8 on both sides. n is greater than or equal to 3. Now let's divide by 8 on the other inequality, and we're getting negative 3. So now, usually we have the negative number on the left, so let's just rewrite it. They're trading places. And we're ready to graph. Open or closed circles? Well, they're actually closed circles because of the line underneath the symbol. So closed circle right here, and we're shading to the left all the numbers that are smaller than negative 3. And we're going to positive 3, closed circle, and shading to the right. So as you can see, they're going in opposite directions. Or inequalities go their separate ways. And our last example. A company makes boxes of crackers that should weigh 213 grams. Should weigh 213 grams. A quality control inspector randomly selects boxes to weigh. Any box that varies from the weight by more than 5 grams is sent back. What is the range of allowable weights for a box of crackers? So what we're looking for is the actual weight in grams of a box of crackers. So let's write that. W equals actual weight in grams. That's what we're looking for. And now let's draw a little model to help us out. What we're going to do is find the difference between the actual and ideal weights. And that is going to be, at most, 5 grams. If it is more than 5 grams, off of the ideal weight, it will be sent back, and that's not good. So here is our model, and now we need to make it an absolute value inequality. So the difference between, difference means subtraction, and the actual weight is going to be W, and the ideal weight is 213 grams. So there's our difference. Is at most means less than or equal to, that means we cannot go over the 5. 5 grams is at most the number that we can go over. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of the absolute value symbols. What this inequality is saying is that we need to be within 5 units from 213. So we need to be 5 more or 5 less. We cannot go over that constraint. So we're going to write W minus 213 is less than or equal to 5, the exact same thing, and W minus 213 is greater than or equal to negative 5. So as you can see, we flipped the symbol and we made the positive 5 a negative 5. Now we only have one step on each inequality to get the W by itself. Add 213 to both sides and we get 218 right there. And add 213 to both sides again. And you get 208. So what this is saying is that the weight of a box of crackers must be between 208 and 218 grams inclusive. So I just wrote, wrote our conclusion sentence to the right. You can write down that on your note sheet. And if the weight of the box of crackers is not between those two values, including 208 and 218, then the box of crackers will be sent to the factory. And that concludes our lesson. You can try the lesson check right now or wait until we do similar problems together during class.